Alright, there we go. It's recording. Alright, so we were discussing yes uh the other day about uh Windows event uh, logs. Right. So yeah, the problem there is yeah, of course, uh one it does not really have self healing for the moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure it's going to happen within the next few updates because there was already a feature request for self-healing to be added into the Windows event log service, but that was created two years ago. And unfortunately, up until now, it only has four votes, so it's not technically getting traction. Right. I but need to vote on that. <laughs> I'll send you the link later so that you could also vote on that. Okay. All right. So before we ended the call or the session last time, you said that you have questions about automation uh, automation manager, right? Right. And right. I, and I have uh, and I also have um another question too that I want to uh throw out there. Oh, yeah. And and that's the and that's the, the you know once again I'm about the discovery but the discovery of like mm -hmm. uh of uh, um other devices like the like ILOs in specific like e e ESXi, you know uh -huh. like mm -hmm. like uh, like how um you know like cuz from from what I see um on on a on a regular discovery even if like the SNMP and all that is set up Mhm. Mm um, it doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, assigning things correctly. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Well, here, this is this is a kind of an example here. You know, on on the on Max, um, I'm not exactly sure, but like, it, why do these things always throw like uh, like errors on on the on memory? Like it's not like a PC, you know. And if you just use the regular thresholds, mm -hmm. yeah. Like I mean, is it even worth monitoring memory on a Mac? Honestly speaking, I don't have really in-depth experience in monitoring Mac stations because uh, it normally depends on a per partner basis. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if like. Uh, I think the most important thing is just uh you know knowing if the if the system's on. I I don't know what other I mean I guess the the reporting part of it I guess would be okay but not necessarily like like to to actually see any like I don't need to see that you know it it, it sucks to have a, a red exclamation point on your you know on your on your devices. Uh, yeah, on your device. Yes, I I definitely understand that. Because again, uh, I haven't worked. I, I've worked with Mac before, uh, before this, before I worked for SolarWinds, but mm -hmm. I never really uh, monitored my mm -hmm. uh, memory usage and CPU usage for Macs. Right, right. And uh, no, I guess it, uh, you know what I've been doing is just putting like a like a disk because it does monitor the disk, right? And that's kind of good to know when a user is running out of disk space. Mm -hmm, yep, yep. But again, uh, it might be best that if you have experience with uh, monitoring Mac, then you could just adjust the thresholds. Or if the users really normally get uh, utilize the memory in Macs to uh, to about ninety uh, above ninety five percent, then I'd suggest that yeah, I'll be just turning off the monitoring for memory. Right. Exactly. Because like, like I said, yeah, it doesn't really do, it doesn't really do much. Like uh, as far as uh, it doesn't, it's not telling me that the computer has failed, or there's something to be alarmed at. Mm -hmm, yep, yep. So. Unless of course it's a server, then you don't want a memory. Right. Full for server, but yeah. So with ESXi. Normally, when you run a discovery, it's it just not it's just not uh, it's not dependent on SNMP alone. So, if you remember, when running a discovery, it's also dependent with 
uh, the username and uh, the, the admin credentials for the ESXi host itself. So that has to be changed right there. Yep, and also with, during running a discovery. Right. Okay, wait, so if you change the credentials right here, mm -hmm. um, like, so, okay, explain to me when you, okay, when you're running the discovery. All right, let me just ask for a request for a control. Okay. All right, so, for example, let me just open a discovery job here. You know, it's like I know, like okay, I've I've uh, you know used the advanced IP, you know, like uh, IP. They're just different types of IP scanners, you know, mm -hmm. um, and 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 I find myself just using the advanced IP because it's like I don't know, it's just there to obviously it's a it's an easy download. Yeah. Yep. Anyways, um, it gives so much information. It's ridiculous, and that's why I was thinking like, I I can't I cannot understand why. You know, and Central would not give that same level of inform that same depth of information on a device. You know, if Advanced IP is doing, if this freeware program is doing it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm like thinking that maybe, maybe the discovery in the way that it is actually, you know. Oh, okay. So I see what you're saying. All right. Maybe uh, one is. Um. It's just with how the discovery job or the discovery process mm -hmm. works with N Central. But if you're going to <clears throat> try to discover ESXi host and you also want to discover the ESXi guest that's running on that host, that will be under advanced settings. Or sorry, okay. under virtualization settings. Right. So if you do perform the virtualization discovery, you just have to make sure that under here, add new account, you add the admin credentials for that certain ESXi host. So if they're not a member of the domain, or even if they are a member of the domain, you would still need to add it here. Okay. All right, so let's say the, the only problem here is if you have, if you're, if one of your customers has, let's say, five ESXi hosts and then all hosts has different admin credentials, then you also need to add all those five here. Okay. All right. And once that's done, then once you run the discovery, uh, NCentral should be able to properly categorize those EXSI hosts okay. and will be able to uh, add this or associate the correct rule and service template to those devices. Because I've seen partners running ESXi hosts or monitoring ESXi hosts with the correct well, service templates and it's also monitoring if the guest operating system or or uh, the guest program is turned on or off or how long it's running stuff like that right okay so so after the fact that if something like like how I was just on, on that one um uh, device. It uh -huh, was the uh -huh. MSA. Um, what do you call it? Uh, can you, after after it's already see it's already here and it's uh, if it, is it is it better to just remove it from here and then add it again and have it discovered again? I mean, because it it already discovered it with a certain level of information. And this is a storage, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, for so it did classify it. Well, it's normally like... it's normally it's just fine once it's already added. Right. So that shouldn't be a problem. If you're just let's say concerned about the services that's going to be monitored, I'm right. not sure or I haven't played around deeply with N Central when it comes to SANs to see mm -hmm. if there are because of course we know that there's a lot of SANs outside in the market so not each and every one will be available or we will have the correct uh, service support for services but if we go to one quick moment this is an mm -hmm. HP MSA right yeah oh all right. 
I'm not sure if you're logged in or if you already have a login, but you should have a login here. Um, let's see. This is the community center or the resource center. Yeah. Alright, so we already have a customer you already have here. If you we search for HP You can download this and then the zip file there when you open that there's going to be a document that's going to contain instructions on how to add these sensor status for the HP MSA S A N into N Central. And that way, you should be able to monitor the CPU, temperature, fan speed. Nice. Okay, so Oi, you're saying if I, uh, I have to... So you, you download this? Yep. And then uh, is, it, is it possible that we... Can we do this really quick? Let's say this is, only, is this not going to take too long? Will it... Well, as long as it's... Yeah, I think yeah, it's already done. Okay, so so. All right, let's check the. Oh, and it'll say. First. All right, so that's going to be a custom service. So there's going to be instructions. Oh, this is relatively simple. Log into your admin. Click on custom service link, import service button, click browse, service file, select and click import. All right, so, and it does it, does it matter what, it's which level? Better to do it on the SO. Okay. All right, we so. Do it on the SO, especially if it's going to be custom service. Gotcha. So it propagates all the way down. Yeah, I didn't know if that is. Let's see, custom. Custom services will be way down, administration, uh, service management. And then import. Wait, is it, could it possibly already be there? Nope, it's blank earlier. The ones that, that's there would be, I believe was for Dell. Sensor status. There you go. And then, and then port. Nice. This is this is too easy. All right. So once that's there, go mm -hmm. back to the device. All right. And let's try adding that. And that was up here. Because it has, there's two, it you know, it has the two interfaces. So there's 48 and 49. But anyway, so I'm assuming that we're going to go over here and then add. Uh, for now, just hit add under status. But if you ha or if you have a lot of sans running, then it's going to be we can create a service template for that. Uh -huh. Okay, so it. All right, monitoring appliance. Choose your probe. And what should. Be if it's not there, coordinate is hmm, weird. It should be here. Coordinate memory. What is the name? Because it's not going to be under server asset, definitely. Mm -hmm. 
It's a, and it, it how come it gives you it gives you the option to use uh, um, the connectivity at a, at a, an instance of connectivity under the um, under the central server because it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, establish that from there does it because I thought it was a connectivity is like a probe. No, uh, it's basically for the probe, but normally uh, the central server w will be the one automatically um, adding it or, um, yeah, um, initially adding it into the device instead of the probe. All right. Yeah, because I like I see that if it's if if it's set to anything else other than the probe, it usually fails. Mm-hmm. Like uh, it can't, you know, because I, I guess it's just not able because of the firewall or whatever. It's not able to. Oh, so it, it, on that, so on that other, on that other part, um, yeah. like, uh, can can that be? Can it be assigned through, like, um, through a service template? Oh no! Is it because it's it's because of the SNMP? No, 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 no. We can't do that because I'm not seeing it here right now. Mm -hmm. Let me just refresh that real quick. Let's see. So we're not seeing that here, even here. So if that's not happening, then let's try it this way. Where's your configuration? Monitoring. Do we have an HPSA in here or no? Just HP servers. All right, I'm going to prefix this with zero just to test it out. And if okay. it's working fine, then you can just use it. Okay. This is for storage. Is there uh, there's already a storage uh, there's already a storage uh, rule there, right? Or storage filter? Is it, isn't there another place that we could have added that? No. Uh, the device class will be storage. Okay. Because per service template, it can only house one device class. Or one service template can only be assigned one device class. So let's say if the laptop's service template is assigned for laptops, Windows, you cannot use that service template for workstations because it's not going to work. Right, right, right. No, but I'm saying that there's there's already a, a storage device class. The, oh, there there's no there is no service templates assigned to the storage device class. Well, there can be multiple service templates assigned mm. to. No, no, but but by from default. By default, no. Okay, okay, okay. I was just trying to understand why why we were actually doing this right now. So, cause we're establishing a service template for storage and we can like say, for instance, if we have another type of a storage uh, uh, um, device, I could just come back to this and I could add on additional mm -hmm, service yeah. templates. Well, there are three default service templates for storage, but not for HP, uh, um, SAN or MSA SAN. Right. We have one for NetApp, a uh, Windows storage server, and for Dell Equal Logic, but no okay. HP. That's okay. why we're creating one for the HP one. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. 
All right, so thresholds, I'm not going to change any thresholds. I'll leave that to you later. Let's okay. just test it if it's going to be added. Right. I'll save this. And then since now... And, and then it's over here, automatically add new instances. It, 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 like, I mean, it wouldn't even... It doesn't make a difference if you turn it on or off at this point because there's there is none. No. It does make a difference if it's going to be... Because if you turn that on... Then every mm -hmm. time, let's say for disk, every time if that's turned on for let's say a laptop, and then mm -hmm. every time you plug in a <clears throat> USB device, then that gets detected, and then you'll have a lot of disk listed there, and it, those services does not get removed automatically. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That's why normally it's turned off. Gotcha. All right. So and I'll and do this. Okay. And Go back to that device here. So that's which one? 48. Yeah, 248. Was it 248? All right, so let's see here if that's saved. All right, so once that's saved. Service templates. Apply new service templates. See, there's equal logic mm -hmm. in this net app. And the service template, this wouldn't even, this wouldn't have shown if we wouldn't have just gone through all that right now. Yep, and yeah. it, it, you won't see this HP sand if we do, if we did not create a service template. Right, right. So let's save that. Ah, oh, because it's in essential mode, so you oh, have man. to change that to professional. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, can we can we go ahead and if if I take a professional license off of another server, can I apply it right away to this? Nope. It'll take some time. It's going to take about fourteen to fifteen days before you could reapply a professional license. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a lockdown period because basically it be it's. I'm not sure they don't how. they don't want us they don't want us to be using licenses for for the well, for different services one license with, for multiple services. Yeah, it's with how sales uh, made it with the licensing agreements, but yeah, I'm not pri privy to why they decided to do that, but Right. Yeah, again, that's how it was designed now, so Okay. I'm not really sure why, so, but are are your professional licenses already out? Or yeah. Everything? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, if you can, since if you want to monitor the status for the SAN, mm -hmm. then you would really need to get another license. Or you could most probably talk with your... Um, is it gonna be um? Is it gonna be a a server license? More or less, it's going to be network devices because it's a SAN, it's a storage. I mean, but what is it going to? What what a uh, professional license is it gonna take? Network devices, right here. Oh. Oh man. So I'm not sure if you could mo more or less talk with your account manager and see if he'll be able to provide you with at least just I I don't know one or two licenses just to test it out if it's going to work with <clears throat> with the HP one and if it works then he'll he'll be happy ha your account manager will be ha happy cuz you're going to get an, uh, additional licenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on one second really quick. Let me let me let me ask about this. Uh-huh.
how, how long will it take to actually get these licenses? Like how long, how how quickly could these um, be put into effect? Because yeah, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Okay. Because uh, they just uh, just walk me through how we can monitor like the storage devices, like other network devices, and uh, and they have like all these features for them, how to add this custom information, mm -hmm. and we can't test it because it needs uh, they need professional licenses they to take advantage of those features. Yeah, so. normally, mm -hmm. if it's to test it out, because you're planning, let's say, to expand your monitoring, once your account manager normally agrees, it normally takes it. It will not. It's not going to take too long, because it's just going to be adding licenses to the server or to your to your SO. Right. So more or less. Um, no, oh, no, no. In the day, they okay, should be then. able to add it for you. Okay. But yeah, I get where you're going because, of course, we want to try it out first before we <laughs> yeah. get licenses. Right, right. And I don't know, I don't know, like, at what level, you know, like, I, I, I'd have to pull some reports to find out, you know, who assigned these, uh, who assigned these licenses and what they're doing right now. Yeah. So, who, who, what devices has these licenses? Or yeah, exactly. So, because you know, like, uh, well, anyways, I, I'm gonna, I, I think that's what I should have done. Um, you know, is is have like have these like some of these accessible. Um. All right. One quick moment. Give me about a minute. All right. <laughs> um. Hi Santa, sorry about that. No worries. All right, so yeah, um, do you know or do you have the information for your account manager, or I could also search that one out for you and provide you with the email and uh, phone number later. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because uh, um, there's a uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I know that uh, we're definitely interested. It's, uh, I guess, a matter of um, the, you know, just getting that approved. All right, because for Josie Moran, they're not using any licenses here. Um, like probably not not all still active, so that's something that we got to go through and yeah, yeah. and come on. And then we need professional because the for workstation for most part we can get a we get away with essential plus Microsoft uh, things unless right. we use a specific version. Right. But for the server. Uh, Yeah, we can give them more. I mean, as long as we use their feature, that it is because you know it, it can 
the professional are more expensive than the yeah. Professional. And we also have market speed to us, you know. Mm-hmm. So well, I'm definitely have, basically we're handling that with the MS and the I mean um, patch management and swap shop. This is this is what they we've been using. That's why we are we assigned to them. Nice. But, but if you need professional for certain yeah. Then, how many you need, and if it's network drive device, then we gotta add to this. Right. See, that thing is new here. Does it Synology consider the network device? Yes, storage is considered uh, uh, network yeah, devices. 15. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no, no. Yeah, th- th- those were the limits that were set for them, but yeah. but uh, yeah. all of the licenses have been, uh, yeah, they've been taken out by. They didn't use any. Yeah. Okay, just tell me how how many we need for the the jersey. Okay. And then we'll get it. We'll All right. Over. Excellent. Okay, so um, all right, I kind of got some pre-approval going over there. So like, whatever your um, what yeah, if you can send me an email um, like with who I have to request that from, then that would be cool. Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. I'll provide right. that to you later after our session. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. So um. Okay. So that's out of the way. So basically, uh, well, I can recap. I can watch this thing over again. But I, from what I remember here, we um uh, downloaded uh the custom monitoring from the resource center, imported it, created a service template, added that to it, and then you know, signed it to storage. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we named it HP. So, so that hopefully in the future, any HP SANS devices should automatically have that applied to it. Is that how it works? Nope, not yet. Oh, yeah. Just we I'll don't have... have a rule. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So you would have to create a rule first that targets those HP SAN devices and then associate that service template to that rule. Got it, got it. But of course, again, uh, it it won't matter if you don't have the in, uh, if you don't have enough professional licenses for the network devices. Yeah. It'll get it'll get assigned, and then at whatever point in time we choose to change the license, then it will actually come into effect. Yep. Okay. All right. So okay, so like the uh, of the the rule to automatically assign these is the only thing that is lacking at this point. So that's that's fine. We don't have to go through all that. Um, uh, we can I guess start with the automation. I'm gonna I'm gonna sure. use like this. Just open up your automation manager. Go back to this uh, to this SO level first. Here, you want to go ahead and... Nope, yeah, yes, please. Just click on mm. Start Automation Manager. You haven't yet installed it? Uh, oh, it would have said, huh? I could yeah. could have... I, uh, maybe on another device I did. That I did.
Act like quick moment, right? Just keep mm, it's good time. All right. So we can't technically do anything on. What what happened? I'm not able to move it. All right. Can you click on new policy, please? Because I think I lost control. All right. So just name it for now. Let's say test or whatever name you like because we won't be able to play around with it without trying to create a new policy for the moment okay so description just put it on us we're onboarding here i'd like for you to be able to Oh, there it goes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, and I was looking over here, and over here we do have an event log, you know? We do have an event log that... Yeah, the problem here... All right. I saw that event log here. So, all right, so I'm able to move it, but I'm not able to click on it. All right, so uh, we do have an event log there, but the problem there is the... Um, you can't type. Yeah, I can't type. Uh, the problem there will be the dates. The problem would be the dates? Yeah, because if you scroll down, there should be one that, I think, get events. Oh, so get events? Yeah. So I can just drag and drop drag this and one? Drop. Yep. Did I drag it to the right place? Not input, just between input and output. There you go. So the problem will be the start date and the end date. Because with, with the Windows event log server uh, with N Central itself, the one that's already in N Central, it automatically updates the start date and end date to the, let's say, the latest scan interval. Right. If we use this, then we would still have to indicate the start date and the end date and if we are indicating the start date and the end date manually we won't be able to use this automation policy to create a custom service right that sucks uh. yeah, but I, again, I haven't played around with a lot of the objects within the automation manager because there are really a lot. Right. So might be in the future or if I get some time, I'll be able to play around with it. And then if I figure out a way to um, base the start date and the end date to what N Central has, then I'll inform you. Okay. All right. So, any what's your question or inquiry about the automation manager? Um, this well, like like a like a, how do you, do you get like a well? I mean, there there's a, um like policies already set up for download. Download. Yeah, like uh, like on in the in the customer portal. Or in the in the in, in the client portal where we were at, uh -huh. like the cus yeah. over here in the custom monitoring. Yep, yep. There's there's policy. Oh, you have control now. Oh, let me see. No, you just click uh, just click anywhere. Gotcha. Um, they would be located. Technical resources. No community. And then you'll have. Scripts and automation policies and custom monitoring. All right. So the automation policies would be. All 
Alright, so automation policy will be, uh, the script type will be the AMP. Oh, okay, like right here. Yep. Oh, that's what Alright, um, what was I gonna say? If, uh, can, we can do a search through here? Uh, the only way to do a search through that would be either control F and then just mm -hmm. search which one you'd Let's like. See. Awesome. Let's see. What are you trying to do? I was looking for, like, I wanted to see what was available for storage, crafter, or image manager. Oh, hold on one second, please. Hold on, sorry. Mm -hmm. Bathy, how I can help you. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. Well, can you can uh did you did you submit a ticket by chance? Okay, cool. Um, let me go ahead and I'm gonna pull that up and uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm actually busy at the moment. I'm gonna see if there's an available tech and if at the very least I'll have somebody give you a call back in just a minute. Then it's uh ask support at flocking dot com. Uh -huh. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay, I'll look out for it. Look at that. Sorry. So, I think I, I'm going to pretty much just need to go through these and... Yeah, I wanted to see if that there if there was you know anything that was available for uh, for um storage you know, craft. Yeah, for for storage craft. Uh, there is, but I haven't tested it out yet. Okay, well, where would those be located? Uh, that will be under custom monitoring, not under the scripts. So again, community. So ultimately, I'm gonna have to uh, like go through the devices, see what uh, see what devices are not applying any type of services to them, and then go through and look to see if there's any nice richness online backup. Oh, that's there. There. Yes, but this just um it might need some work because it's been there for about three years now, and I'm not sure if it's updated. Oh, and there's a ping. ping test. Yeah, if you scroll down onto storage graph, there should be one there. There you go. Oh. Yeah, but if you open that and click on download, it's not going to download the zip file. It's going to open it's going to give you the XML file <coughs> raw. Okay. And what is what what does this suggest? Just yeah, see this this thing might be this actually might be of use. I mean, does it? What were you uh, explaining? That uh, can I can I go like this? Let's see. Um, can I go like? Let's see, I think, uh, 
Yeah, you could try that one out. Okay. And now, and, and we're going to go through that same that same process of going over here and custom services. Nope, you won't be oh, no. using custom services for that one because one, it says service templates on top. Okay. So that's a service template. Wait, wait, wait. So explain explain that to me one more time. Like, how if it's an XML file? Yeah. One quick moment. Okay. Uh, let's go back here. All right. So if you click on storage graph, you'll see that on the first part, it's it's a, it's a service, service template. template. Okay. Okay. Now, if we go back to this one here, the sensors that we did yeah. earlier, if we try to open this up, oh here, let me let, let me go drag it over here. This one says that it's. Description module. If we go way, way down, it's not saying a service template, but a service. Okay, gotcha. So technically, this is a, this is a custom for template. We won't be finding any template here, or it's not going to be a service template. Gotcha. All right, so. Since that's the case, this one is a service template. A service template, then instead of adding it as a custom service, we would have to add that. We would have to import it. Although the problem here is the service template is a zip, normally it's a zip file. Okay, do you want to, do you want me to uh, zip that up really quick? Or do you have another uh, solution for that? Um, Supposedly, it should be within. It should be a service template, but uh, let's try importing that as a serv as a service and see what will happen. It's on the desktop. What's the name again? I believe it was storage. There it goes. Nope. Yeah. So let me check that one out real quick as to how we'll be able to do to import that one. Because okay. again, there's more or less there are it's more it's more than just zipping it up yep it's more than just zipping it up so we'll see first all right okay so i owe you one for storage craft custom monitoring All right, so going back to your automation manager, uh, do you have other questions or inquiries regarding automation manager? Um, you know what, this is a, like a, the, 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 you know, just assembling, like getting a, an idea, because like, you know, the, the, the onboarding and the resources that I've seen for um, creating, um, you know, an automation, like mm -hmm. a policy, um, it, uh, it's complicated. Like, like, can we can we put a a simple like some like I don't know why they have to put such a complicated one together like you know for like the onboarding. What type did thing, they you know? do for the onboarding? Um, I, you know what I don't I don't remember. I just remember that it was complicated. And then I remember looking online, you know, uh, on YouTube, looking at, and I was on 
you know, um, the in Central's uh, channel, mm-hmm. and uh, and the same thing. They there's some guy he was building a he like he was building. I think he wanted to show the 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 architecture off, but in the in the in the in the process of showing off the architecture, he you know he just he made it really complicated. So I mean, like the the, the there is a um the the like some homework that needed to be done, and that was like a, how to set up a um an automation policy that will scan um like uh, devices for a third party antivirus. Yep. Yep. So is is it possible we can go through that really quick? Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Um. Go to your custom monitoring first. Okay. Oh wait, custom. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, go to the community. Go back. Okay. Let me borrow the mouse. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so let's go back to community. If it's going to be with antivirus or AV status, it's going to be under scripts and automation policies. And that's under AV status. Let's download this for now. All right. Save it. All right. And once it's saved, could you extract it, please? All right. All right. Good. So. If we open this one up, Wait one quick moment. Oh, here, let me. I should have said my screen. No, no, that's just fine. Just open it up on your end. Give me about five minutes here. I just need to make okay. a quick message here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this while you do that. Hold on. Hello. Hey Matt. Hey hey, I'm I'm actually on on a phone call and that it should I should be off in just another five minutes. Okay, I'll call you back. Alright, so if you see there, while well, I'm trying to do it, this I'm trying to do something here. Mm-hmm. Um, it says that just go one. We need to get that in a script repository first, because mm-hmm. it's a VBS script. Okay. Alright, so let me just download it real quick so that I also have a copy here on my end. Um. All right, so first step is click Add button and choose Scripting. All right, so we go back to your end central. I suggest that just open up the instructions on the, on on the other side. page gotcha. or other screen. Gotcha. Okay. So we're going to... Let's see, import the script into Central. Mm-hmm. So we're going to configure and schedule tasks. Yep. And scripts. Oh, because it's already, we could just, it might already even be, or no, it has to be imported here. Yep, you have to add it first. Okay. All oh, right, gotcha. so hit add. Uh, and then scripting. Uh, 
I didn't just type in AV status script. Okay. Let's see. than that. Okay. Alright, now save that. Run the script across a few devices that have third party AV. Navigate to Yeah, just, okay. Okay. just to what's the question? Yeah, does this uh -huh. does this have um does this need like uh do do devices need a professional professional as, license in order to as long as you're going to run a scheduled task or you're going to use a custom service, the device should be unprofessional. Okay. So if we look uh Let's see. Okay, so how can we, like, if we want to run it on, well, we first we have to figure out which device has professional license. Uh, just go to your, yeah, just go to the all devices view. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, here, let, let's, I want to, oh, because this is why it sucks to put stuff in. Let's see. Uh. And Normally, we... I just I just do it on all devices view and then use the filter that we created. There. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly the professional license. All right, so so if we want, I want to do station like these these three stations. Yep, just choose them. Let's run okay. the from there. Uh, just, just, uh, just click on the box there. Hit add add task on top. Add task. Run the script. Yep. All right. Uh, and then select from the repository. There should be AV status. Okay. Local system. Which uh, local system credentials? Just local system credentials should be fine. Then okay. check the targets. All right. Nice. Good. Schedule is now. It's now. And then just hit the just hit save. So technically, it's going to take about a few minutes, I think. Okay. Um, and here's a, another uh, like uh, very basic question. You know, like um, to get in a to do like a asset scan, like on demand. Mm -hmm. Um. Does it does a uh, does a device have to be on a professional license for that as well? So like like uh, if I want to see so okay anyways how how do you isn't there an, an easy way to do that? Well, normally most partners just do a recurring discovery job, and right. normally with a recurring discovery job, it automatically refreshes or updates the asset information if there's new asset information for that certain mm -hmm. device. 
Now, if you're going to do it on a per device basis, there's no easy way to do that, but going into the device mm -hmm. or checking, or let's say, for example, for this one, under all devices view, because normally if under all devices view, there's no update asset info. There should be one if there is. Nope, no update asset info here. Because if you go into the device itself, you'll have the option to update the asset info, meaning you're automatically asking it's like patch on demand. You're demanding the computer to update or to do an asset scan. Yeah, like like for instance, like in the case of like a um the memory on the Mac how it's showing its full like you know, and it, it stays at that, you know, when it when you know that it's not uh, oh yeah, there it goes. Yeah. However, if you go to settings Under local agent, it's going to be an asset scan that normally is configured for the, uh, the from to start at the exact time when this asset was discovered or this device was discovered. So right. every day at three thirty six, it does an asset scan. Right. Cool. So, so like you said, and it, that doesn't require any special license. Nope. Okay. So there's some. So obviously there's some tasks. Some tasks that can be run on an essential level, and some that and and I guess well, all the custom ones obviously can't. All the custom ones can't. You can't run that on a on an essential on an essential level. Right. Okay. If you're going to do, or if you're going to use the AV status, then you would have to have a professional license. If you're going to use the custom monitoring, like the one that we had for um, HP MSA SAN, then that's again going to be for professional. Gotcha. Okay, so um, back to the to those. Um, do you think it's updated yet? Most likely. And uh, we're going to be looking under. Um... All right. So the reason why they're asking you to try using the AV status script is because if you follow the instructions, it's going to. Uh, give you experience in one creating a filter creating the scheduled task profile right and then creating a service template wait cuz did we did we we create a service template you can create your own custom service template um, within that AV, uh, within that PDF, the instruction PDF. There's a mm -hmm. part there wherein it's going to ask you to create your service template that will house the AV status script or your selected service templates. Okay, so we got to that point. I said. Going back to scheduled task, I refresh this now. So it says completed. If I check completed, okay, Viper Business Agent has been detected. AV status definition is zero days old. AV status is up to date. Or it's running. Okay. Oh, they're populating the WMI class with data. Well, technically, the service template there, if you just scroll down, there's no page. That's why I hate this PDF. If 
you scroll down to page because because like ultimately um like this this can uh, be uh this can be assigned to the workstation as a service correct yep through the service template too okay that i mean that's ultimately what the service the service template is um it's intended for that is correct that's why yeah. it's going to ask you to create your own its own service template that will only house the av status because of course you don't want to apply the av status to devices that has av defender but if you don't really have av defender then that's not going to be a problem right so okay, can if we go to the if we go to the if we go to the um to the the agent can, can we can we do that right now um and uh Go to the the agent, one of the agents that we selected to run the task on. Obviously, one of these. That yeah, is. sure, sure, sure. Uh, let's go to station fifty four. Yeah, that'll work. All right, and there. Let's just cancel this one out. So let's go to station fifty four. We're station fifty four here. Okay. Then let's say we add the AV status script uh, manually, right? Right. So, let's just, yeah, because we're over for nine nine minutes, but it's just oh, okay. fine. Right on. Cool. AV status. Apply. But of course, that will not work. Uh, it will only work once the AV script was run. So before we do that, so that's here already, right? Right. So we would have to also create a profile or a scheduled task profile that will run the AV status script every now and then. Right, right, right. Because what, what the AV status service does is it gets information from the WMI. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the AV, third-party AV antivirus programs does not write on WMI, All right? So the okay. VPS script that we just uploaded, what it does is it checks your third-party program or it checks the anti uh, third-party antivirus program. And then once it detects that, it collects those information and it writes those information into WMI. Okay. So that the service will have data that it could pull from the WMI. So right now, since we've run it, it will have data. So if you check on it, you'll have information like what's the product name. Nice. If it's if the scanning is enabled or the real time scanning is enabled, if it's if the antivirus product or the Let's say the definitions are up to date, version number, and when was the AV script last ran? All right. So from here, you already know, hey, customer, your antivirus program is already out of, uh, up, out of date. And if you are billing them per ticket, then you could already create a ticket for an antivirus program that's already out of date. Right. But yeah, so since we're already out of time, try following the PDF instructions on how to create the scheduled tasks. Uh huh. And then uh, the scheduled tasks profile. All right. So so I mean this this right here it's like a um uh this is gonna now that we applied it this is going to be checking it right from it's going to be checking that through the wmi okay but, so it is but it needs the av status script to be run once in a while okay so th that's what i'm I'm getting at this scan interval what is it yep. scanning for it's scanning the wmi class so basically the av status service will scan the WMI for any updated information. Now, if you don't have a scheduled task profile that runs the AV 
status script once in a while, then the data that this service will be getting will it's be going to be outdated. Yeah. Okay. So so ultimately, that uh, service that service template and it's on this uh, it's on this uh, thing here. Yep. Yeah. Cool. I'll look into that. Yep, and then you have my email if you have questions or you're having problems in creating that or doing the scheduled task profile. Just send me an email, and if I'm not really that, if I'm not busy or I'm not doing anything, then I could most probably reply immediately. Okay. But I'll try, of course, my best to reply as soon as possible. Okay. Scheduled task. Okay, I'm scrolling through that. So ultimately, yeah, like this could run like once or twice a day and then pick up all that information and then uh and then like each each workstation that's assigned to that is going to um it's going to refresh itself with that information and if it sees anything it's gonna have to throw a flag from here mm -hmm. yeah so 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 this thing like if it's only if it's only um oh well, I guess you kind of wanted to have a this is this is a the scanner interval is this in this is in minutes yep. Okay. So now right. with AV status, you do more more or less you just have it in minutes since one it's not going to fluctuate for if it's up to if it's outdated today or if if it's outdated let's say um twelve in the morning, it's not going to be outdated in twelve thirty. Right, right, right. Like even if it was like uh, every two hours or whatever. I mean, it's because the time to stale. What, what, what? Uh, and the time to stale does that mean? Like it gives it like a. If, uh, if the service or if N Central does not get any update from the agent regarding this service, for three hours. It's going to go to stale, meaning there's no new information. Okay. So ultimately, you could like double both of those figures. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just to to use less resources of the system. Yep. Yep. It's, it's right. going to depend on you, but you could basically play around with it. Gotcha. All right. I think uh, yeah, today was today was a good day. Again, learned a lot. All right, great. So I'll send you the links for the recording, uh, both uh, in an email, but most probably either later today or early tomorrow, since sometimes the server gets a little bit busy in con uh, converting those videos or processing right, no the worries. recording. Yeah, and I mean, like, uh, there's ultimately, like, say, if I want to, um, if, if, you know, because, uh, that was a different type of like uh, automation policy because that was with a VBS script that was actually not really using the automation uh -huh, manager. Uh -huh, yeah. Um, how, how can I go about, um, you know, if I, uh, you know, I'm going to play around with this a little bit, but uh, I, I would ultimately like to build something in it. Uh, all right. Uh, try, try playing around with the automation policy. I suggest that say three days or uh, within the within this week, and inform me if you're ready to go with this automation policy, and we could again schedule another session with like this one, and All I'll right, walk you good. through with the automation policies. Okay, and and these uh, these training videos that are right here are I believe I went through a few, but this is a. Oh yeah, you guys got a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't see that. All right, so let me go through let me go through all these videos and then I'll uh automating your Microsoft world. Nice. Yeah, let me go through this. I'm going to finish this and then I'm, we're going to schedule another uh we'll schedule another um uh, session. Yeah, sure. Just inform me when uh if you're ready. Okay. Excellent. All right, very good. So again, uh, thank you very much Santo and you have a nice day. All right, you too. Thanks a lot. I'll be looking out for those videos too. Yep, sure, no problem. Okay, man. All right, bye. All right, take care. Bye.